are. It's not like I'm working for a large pharmaceutical company. And even the people yeah. that are working within pharmaceutical companies have a very different approach to this too, right? So like for every agent that's, for every set, for every like agent that makes it to market, for every drug that makes it to market, there's something like 700 compounds that have been screened in advance. The, the amount of time and money that goes into just finding something, um, especially in experimental science where like there's no result, no results guaranteed. And if you don't get a result, you don't know if it's because the experiment didn't work or if you did something wrong or if really the thing that you were testing is, was supposed to produce no result. Like, so it, it's such a, I would say that like the healthiest thing I learned over the course of trying to complete a dissertation was that experimental work is like 95% failure. Mm. And so you have to very, very quickly adapt to failing, like being used to getting up every single day, working a long day, and then not getting anything out of it. We have experiments that run like for, so for a year, I got up every single morning for experiments that were taking weeks to run and every single one of them failed. Mm. Every single one failed. Same experiment over and over again, slightly different modifications. Every single one failed. Wow. So you should you, be a, you should be a comedian. Way <laughs> less work and you still get all the same failure. All the same failure. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean that's the that's the thing. I guess it's just that like the income is fair. It's it's nice income. I'm I'm happy, but um it's not glorious, right? It's yeah. it's public servant level income. Yeah. And uh so I'm not popping bottles of champagne and the work hours which by the way champagne's it. not that expensive yeah no, that's true <laughs> but I, i'm absolutely not popping it anyway because i just <laughs> cash buy it but like it's, it's just one of these things if you work you work single-mindedly to do this thing so the so i would say the vast yeah. majority of people that are working to do it are working honestly right they're working from an honest honest interest you have to be passionate about it anyway yeah. That, that minimally because otherwise it's really hard to get up and do it in the morning but there are bad actors so to be clear there there have been bad actors and uh, the the number one most dangerous bad actor that i can think of is andrew wakefield right? who's the uh, source of this exact problem that we're talking about who who is that so andrew wakefield was the um was the investigator that first published a paper connecting measles infections to autism Ah. And that paper in the first year was um, all the other co-authors pulled themselves off of it. And then, uh, so that was published, I want to say in 89 or 92. It's, it's around the early 90s. Um, and then eventually the paper was pulled entirely. And he, I believe now is unlicensed. And the reason why isn't because this paper connected a measles infection to autism. Uh, it's because he, to get the paper completed, he went to a child's birthday party and sampled kids for it without consent. Oh, wow. It's patently against the law. So um, that's the first thing. And then his history with this, because it was a controversial paper when it came out anyway, not because he didn't get consent. Um, that was discovered in the course of the the investigations into him. But uh, because when the paper was refuted, how, how did I, how did I guess that he had books that he was peddling? Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's a big deal guy. Uh, when it was refuted, the target changed so that the narrative around this is continually changed. So at one point it was like, well, it's not the infection. It's the vaccine. It's not uh -huh. the vaccine. It's the preservatives in the vaccine. It's not that it's, and it just, the target keeps moving. And I think what, what upsets me the most about this is that it's had this massive international fallout. Mm -hmm. I don't know what his motivations were other than at least at the beginning to initially publish. Um, but it takes advantage of people who are actually really struggling. You know, like yeah. that's the saddest thing about it. It takes advantage of people that are really struggling, who really want answers, who really want to protect their kids, who feel guilty that, they're, that their children have a problem and so yeah. you know or you know are that their route is going to be you know through life is going to be atypical 
Yeah. Not to problematize autism. I mean, it's got, it's such a big spectrum disease. There's a many disease uh, disorder. There's many different ways of thinking about it, but it's probably uh, not something a parent would wish for. I don't know. Uh, I think the good way to think about it is, is maybe at least for some people, one of my friends described it to me like this, which is that it's here. It exists. Mm -hmm. It's an atypical path. And she is a, a, a kid who is, who is really far on the on the spectrum um and so you know they have a lot of a lot of challenges that are, are different than you know what i have to go through with my kids every day hmm. but um but in any case so i'm not an autism special, yeah no i i I, I, I can get a hold of <laughs> autism people no problem yeah. <laughs> i i've had them on before um but uh but but, but more more kind of in line what with um what we're saying, because this isn't like I'm not a fan of big pharma. I I have uh, I have a show that um, uh, it, you know I often have advocated for um, more psychedelic research and some of the kind of things that went into the um, uh, the scheduling system that that uh, were were fairly corrupt and whatnot. Like I the world. I, I'm not naive enough to think that the world is free of corruption and and everything oh, else. It's, yeah, it's no, just pharmaceutical companies are not benevolent creatures, right? No. They're they're a creature of a corporate world. So they uh, how did how was it put in the book Corporation? They describe corporations as sociopathic. Yeah, you remember that? Um, yeah, I think I saw the documentary. Yeah, um, I think I cheated too because it's a really big book. Sorry, <laughs> not to say that watching yeah. a doc is like cheating, but, um, but yeah, I mean they have they're motivated by very different things. If you're a publicly shared company, you're motivated by by maintaining the um, the confidence of your shareholders, right, and maintaining a maintaining market and getting return on investment. You're not motivated necessarily by like people suffering. If that were the case, there wouldn't be orphan drug legislation to ensure that drugs for Parkinson's, for example, get produced, right? Yeah. The, the government has to invest to ensure that those things make it to market. 